This is the BMW i7, BMW's very latest super duper high-end luxury electric vehicle. Uh, it is, of course, a pure electric version of the 7 Series, which will be coming to the UK next year, um, including probably a mild hybrid diesel and definitely a couple of plug-in hybrid variants. Now, the i7 is, of course, a rival to the Mercedes EQS. When it goes on sale, it's going to be available as an X-Drive 60, which means all-wheel drive, 536 brake horsepower, permanent fully adaptive air suspension on every corner. Um, it really has got all the bells and whistles that you would expect, and I would also throw in a very large curved touchscreen with the latest operating system 8 infotainment in there as well, and level 3 semi-autonomous driving. Is it the prettiest car out there? Well, probably not. You do get these twin headlights as standard on the kind of high-end BMWs. That's a trademark that you get on the really posh BMWs. Um, and if you want to, you can even add optional ambient lighting to the kidney grill, which has become even bigger now on this new 7 Series model. Um, I don't know that I'd say it's a looker, but it's certainly a striking car. Um, so it does have some presence on the road. Sales of the BMW i7 start in 2023 and is going to be available from launch with a 101.7 kilowatt hour usable battery capacity, four wheel drive, 536 brake horsepower and a WLTP range of up to 388 miles. In truth, in a big luxury limo like this, it's all about the rear seat accommodation. And the i7 doesn't disappoint. So for a start, I would add this particular test car that we've got here is about as high spec as it gets. So lots of stuff in this car is optional, including that sort of crystal effect finish that we have in the front there, but in the back, cashmere upholstery. You've also got the executive seating pack in here, which means that I can recline the seats. I've got massaging functions. I've got everything you could possibly want. It really is, it's pretty special back here, but I want to show you a couple of the features that I think set this apart even from the BMW's rivals. Let me just access all my modes here on this little touchscreen that I have on the door, which is a standard feature. Here we go. I can access the modes and I can go for my personal favorite, theater mode. This has to be the best screen I've ever seen in a vehicle. It's extraordinary. 30 inch screen here, complete with Amazon, Netflix, you've got all of your TV streaming stuff on here. And that's not the only thing that uh, the i7 does. So if I just open these blinds here, there you go. Then you can just see all these lines on the sunroof. Well, those actually light up ambient lit at night, which looks pretty spectacular. And if you thought that the BMW i7's cabin looked good in the daytime, at nighttime, it is a total showstopper. As for the dash in the BMW i7, well, it's become a lot more minimalist. There are many fewer buttons, but you do still get the rotary controller for this system as per the old fashioned BMW iDrive, which I like. I think it makes the system a bit easier to navigate. The climate control has migrated into the screen. Boo, hiss, etc. I know lots of people don't like that. The temperature control is permanent. It's always visible on the screen. So that is all right and it's quite easy to reach. So I don't actually mind it that much. Other than that, you've also got the new operating system 8 that we've also seen on the BMW iX. And that means that you've got incredible graphics, this beautiful curved touch screen, which I do think looks really special. Maybe it hasn't quite got the wow factor of the Mercedes EQS's hyper screen, but I think this is kind of slightly easier to use maybe. It's a bit less intimidating. There's still a lot of features. I mean, the i7, as with the Mercedes EQS and you know the Audi A8, all of these sort of top end limos, they're always, showcases for the technology that the manufacturers can provide and so they do tend to be a bit complicated all of this stuff will trickle down into other models eventually i like the drive modes so the operating system 8 it's got some pretty fancy drive modes such as the expressive mode here which gives you this fabulous art installation type screen finish you might not be able to hear it because it's absolutely throwing it down with rain right now but it plays some rather fancy <laughs> lift music for you and turns the massage function of it and then you accelerate <laughs> and it's suddenly, it's like somebody's put a synthetic elephant through a mangle or something. I don't know, but it's quite an extraordinary noise that it makes. As for how the i7 drives, well, I'll be honest, I haven't really had much of a chance to properly drive it in anger. So I'm on a car of the year event at the moment. I'm a juror on the European car of the year. Very proud to be so. And we've arranged as many of the new cars of 2022 as we can together to see which one is going to win our overall award does mean that we're sharing these cars with a lot of people and we're a bit pushed for time. So forgive us if the video is perhaps a touch more scrappy than usual, but it's still a really great opportunity to get in them early. And the i7, obviously, priority 
it's a luxury limo and it does that very well. As I said, I can't really necessarily speak for what it's like at higher speeds and on decent roads, but over bad surfaces, it's got permanent all round air suspension. The suspension works completely independently at every corner and it does a really, really fine job. Refinement is exceptional. Even at high speeds, you don't get much wind flutter at all. I have to say, if I've got to find a niggle, I really don't like this steering wheel very much in the i7. I don't understand why BMW seem to have this habit of putting really thick rimmed steering wheels in their cars. I don't think it adds much at all. In fact, I think it detracts. I'd much rather have a nice sort of slimmer rimmed steering wheel as of the now sadly defunct BMW i3. It's got level three semi-autonomous systems in this car, which work really well. I've had a go in that and actually it doesn't pinball between the white lines as a lot of the semi-autonomous kind of adaptive cruise systems do. It feels really confident and good on that, on the, on the brief stint I've had in it. So this is the X-Drive 60. That's the only model that's gonna be available at launch in the i7. The 7 Series as a whole, um, you're gonna get plug-in hybrids and possibly a diesel in the UK. That's still to be confirmed. This gets 536 brake horsepower, dual electric motors, of course, for permanent four-wheel drive. It's also got a launch mode and it's even got a boost button here, which gives you 10 seconds of full thrust. <laughs> and it does shift as well, <laughs> it's good. As for the real world range, well, it's not quite up there with the longest range of the Mercedes EQS models, it has to be said. 388 miles from a 101 kilowatt hour battery, perhaps isn't the best efficiency that you could imagine, but it's still a very long range, so it should certainly do the job, plus uh, charging of up to 195 kilowatts, so that's pretty impressive, 10 to 80% in about 34 minutes, apparently, according to BMW. So you've got the range, you've got the charging speeds, you've certainly got the ride and the refinement and all of your gadgets. I think the i7 kind of has it all going for it. Does it matter that it's not on a bespoke platform like the Mercedes EQS? Well, I don't think it probably does to most people. Does it matter that the looks are quite so divisive and perhaps not so appealing? Probably. Even so, I really, really rather like it. I think by the standards of uh, high-end luxury limos, petrol, electric or otherwise, this is going to be a hard one to beat. Overall, the BMW's real strengths are in its details. Not the exterior styling details perhaps, but certainly in the lighting features, the boutique feel of the interior and the deeply smug-inducing comfort levels. It's not as fun to drive as the Audi e-tron GT and the Mercedes EQS soundly beats it for range. Even so, provided you are on the inside looking out, the BMW i7 really is one of the most luxurious and satisfyingly sumptuous cars in any class. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of our videos. Head to cargurus.co.uk for a whole host of fantastic used cars and we will even tell you if it's a good deal or not.